Hello everyone and a warm welcome to everyone that's joined us for this webinar presented jointly by the Zaga Consortium and the Dahlia Alliance, focusing on how Zaga Book 20, D4i and Dali 2 can help you get more points and hopefully win the DOE L Prize. Um, just a couple of bits of housekeeping from me, first of all. Presentations will last 40 to 45 minutes in total. That will be followed by a Q&A session and we will finish in just about an hour from now. Um, please type your questions into the Q&A box in the WebEx platform. Um, you can do this at any time throughout the webinar. Please don't use the chat box for the questions because we probably won't monitor that so closely. Um, and when you're typing anything, please don't include any company sensitive information uh, or any sensitive information. Um, all the materials, including a recording, will be available after the event. Uh, the recording should be available shortly after the event. Um, and they will be on both the Zaga website and the Dali Alliance website. And you can see those links there. And I will post them at the end as well. Um, any questions we don't get through in the live session, we'll do our best to follow up on those uh, in writing later on. I'll quickly run you through the agenda then. As I said, the presentations will take uh, 40 to 45 minutes in total. Um, first up, welcome from me and this agenda. Um, then, uh, so I'm Paul Drosen, I'm the general manager of the Dali Alliance. Um, then we'll have an introduction to the L Prize by Gabe Arnold. Gabe's a senior engineer at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, PNNL. That will be followed by um, an overview from the Dali Alliance. Uh, Scott Wade, our technical manager, will give details of how uh, various parts of Dali and D4i can help you win extra points. And then, uh, Adrian Green will present on behalf of Zaga uh, details how Zaga can also get you extra points and help you win that prize. And then right at the end, we'll have the question and answer session for anything that, uh, that wasn't covered in the webinar. So please put your questions in the Q&A panel. Um, as we go through, feel free to, uh, to ask anything you need. That's all from me. Uh, I'm going to hand over now to Gabe, Gabe Arnold. Uh, Gabe, over to you. Great. Thank you, Paul. Uh, why don't you go ahead and advance to the next slide there? Uh, so, hi, hi everybody. Um, as Paul said, my name is Gabe Arnold, and, I, and I'm with Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And if you're not familiar, we are a U.S. Department of Energy National Laboratory. And I'd like to thank the Zaga Consortium and the Dali Alliance for putting together this webinar. Uh, as you're going to hear today uh, from the Zaga and Dali speakers, there's up to two points that are available within the L Prize for systems that utilize a couple of standards from these organizations, uh, specifically uh, D4i from the Dali Alliance and Zaga Book 20 from the Zaga Consortium. And what I'm going to do is give you a broader overview of this contest, and I know our other speakers will give you more information on the specific opportunities uh, for these standards within the LPRIZE. Um, so uh, we're really excited about this competition. This is a big effort by the U.S. Department of Energy to inspire, uh, to invest in, and to support U.S. innovation in commercial lighting. Uh, we've got some very big prizes here. It's over $12 million that's offered across three different phases. Next slide, Paul. And if you uh, break down these phases, you can see that as you move through the competition from uh, the initial concept phase to the prototype and then the manufacturing and installation, there's different types of opportunities here. And the concept phase is, is really just that, it's concepts. Uh, design concepts, ideas. Uh, you don't have to manufacture anything for this phase. And so this is an opportunity to really think beyond and not be constrained as you would if you were developing a real product. And then as you move along to the later phases, 
uh, the stakes increase with higher cash rewards and real physical installable products and systems. Uh, but it doesn't end there. After the prizes are awarded, there will be some big efforts to support the deployment of these innovations into the market. Uh, DOE will be working with partners. We'll be doing demonstrations, case studies, and a whole lot more. So there's really a lot of opportunity here in this in this uh, in this contest. And one thing that we do want to reinforce is that you don't need to participate in all the phases of this competition. You can participate in only the concept or only the prototype or only the manufacturing and installation or any combination. Uh, what makes sense for you? Uh, so right now, this concept phase is open. It opened in May and submissions are due November 19th. And we've got a lot of prizes on this one. There's 10 and we really hope to see uh, lots of diverse submissions from manufacturers and, and others, not just manufacturers, um, as well as small companies, large medium sized. We're really welcoming participation for this. And so this is a, a great opportunity for you to work with the Department of Energy on lighting of the future to be nationally recognized for your innovation and to receive some substantial cash awards along the way. Next slide. Uh, so the Alprise has five focus areas where we're looking for innovation, uh, efficacy, quality of light, connectivity, product life cycle and innovation and inclusion. And sometimes these things are trade-offs like, like with efficacy and quality of light. And that's one of our key innovation goals here. How can we get to high efficacy while also achieving exceptional quality of light and connectivity? Uh, we also have product life cycle here, which uh, incorporates sustainability. It's a topic of growing importance that's being discussed in the industry. Uh, how can we make lighting more sustainable beyond just its operational energy use and reduce the overall environmental impact? And finally, we've got this category innovation and inclusion as a focus area. And this topic, diversity, equity and inclusion of our energy solutions is a major priority for the Department of Energy under this current administration. And there's no requirements here. I think what we're, we're asking for is for uh, people to propose innovations and how we can improve uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how lighting systems are designed, uh, maybe how they're manufactured, how they're deployed into the market, or or how they're installed. So that's really a kind of an open-ended category. There's a couple of examples you'll find in uh, the rules, and you're going to be looking to provide a little bit more information about this one over time because we've gotten a lot of questions about what exactly we mean. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here we break down these five categories further into specific technical topics and the L prize has mandatory minimum requirements that any winning system has to have to win. And that's um, represented by the, the check marks here. And then there's these optional aspects. And this is where you can earn some points for innovation. And uh, I've highlighted one here. You can see the sensor ready and upgradable. And uh, this is really about standards-based upgradability for sensors. And this is where you can earn some points for the use of the Zaga Book 20 and D4I standards that our speakers will provide more details about. And um, we think that uh, you know, use of these standardized ports and connections can really help increase the use of sensors in buildings and reduce the risk to customers of adopting these technologies. And so that's what it's about, and that's why we've got these these points here for it. Um, there, are, you know, it's a couple of many standards referenced by the L Prize, and you know, many different innovation opportunities here. And so uh, we're highlighting this one here today, and I hope and encourage you to check out uh, the official rules to learn about more of the opportunities. Next slide, please. Just a couple of other things I want to cover. Um, first, uh, what type of lighting is eligible for the L Prize? And it's it's only LEDs. It's an LED competition, and specifically an LED system for a commercial or institutional lighting application. So that's that's like offices, healthcare facilities, educational facilities. Uh, it's applications where linear lighting has been predominant, and that's absolutely not to say uh, we're looking for a troffer or a linear pendant. Uh, the the L Prize doesn't specify form factor by intention, and we're really welcoming 
some of that innovation we're seeing in form factors. Uh, but, but any submission, it has to be appropriate for providing ambient lighting in these types of commercial applications. So, you know, no task, no accent, display, outdoor, high or low bay lighting. Um, and then I want to note that this is a full system competition. And so uh, submission should include all the system components necessary to meet the technical requirements, uh, the minimums. And so, you know, that's going to include not just the luminaires, but it will include sensors and control devices, interfaces, and software. Um, and in some cases, I, I think probably for the later phases in particular, um, where you've got to actually provide some real uh, physical products, um, you may need a team to provide a full system solution if you're not a company that makes both the controls and the luminaires. And uh, so that's a good segue, I think, to the next slide, uh, Paul. And um, so we want to really encourage teaming on this and try to facilitate those connections as we're able to. Uh, the LPRIZE submission platform uses something called Hero X. You can see the link on the screen here. It's a, it's a, a, a website platform that's used by all of the Department of Energy's American-made uh, challenge prizes. And they've got a, a functionality on there um, where you can identify teams or innovators that are looking for partners. Um, and so you should go check that out and at least follow the prize there. Um, that, that way you'll receive information about it. Uh, you can also choose to solve the challenge and register yourself as a team or an innovator. Uh, there's no commitments with that. Sometimes we've, we've had people that have been kind of hesitant to click that button, solve the challenge, uh, if they weren't sure they were going to enter this. And you should go ahead and click that and it'll give you some access to a little bit more information. It doesn't commit you to entering the contest. But if you have any questions about the Hero X page, you can just email us. I think the next slide's got some um, uh, an email address. Uh, and I guess one more thing I want to mention here is that uh, when we get to the next phase, uh, the prototype phase, we'll be issuing an RFI um, request for information for teaming partners. And this will be a formal process to really try and link together those teams. And we're going to keep this. Uh, request for information open throughout the duration of the rest of the contest and we'll be publishing a continually updated list of potential partners that uh, might be interested in, in partnering with manufacturers or else partnering to get these solutions deployed into the market and um, so that'll be a, a good resource to look for uh, uh, once the, the next phase starts. Um, so uh, thank you very much for listening and I want to thank again the Zaka Consortium and Dolly Alliance for hosting this and you can visit uh, the, the Hero XL Prize page uh, to find links to some more in depth webinars that we've hosted on this contest. And again, you can email us anytime at uh, LPRIZE at NREL, that's NREL.gov, with any questions. I'll go ahead and turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gabe, uh, for that introduction. Um, I'll just remind people that if, if you have any questions uh, live that you want to add, then Put them in the Q&A box in the uh, in, in the webinar platform, and we'll try to get to those at the end. Uh, right now, I'm going to hand over next uh, to Scott from the Dali Alliance, and Scott's going to give you the uh, lowdown on Dali and Dali 2 and D4i and how they relate to the L Prize. Thank you, Paul. Let me just share my presentation. Okay, good morning or afternoon. I'm Scott Wade, the Technical and Certification Manager for the DALI Alliance. And I'm going to take you through the D4I and DALI 2 specifics, so how they can help you win the X Prize. So the agenda, first I'm going to give a quick overview of DALI, DALI 2, D4I and the DALI Alliance, what they are, what they mean. Then we'll look at the parts, the DALI parts that can help with the L prize criteria. Then what is D4I? So what makes up D4I? What does it really mean? We'll look at testing and certification of products. How do you get D4I or, or DALI2 on a product? And we'll look at the product database as well, where you can find products that are, are already certified. So DALI, the basics, it's DALI stands for Digital Addressable Lighting Interface. It's an industry standard protocol, a language for bi-directional digital communication 
between lighting control devices and it is dedicated to lighting. So it has a rich feature set supporting all the needs of lighting control. It's technically managed in the open global standard. It's called IEC 62386. DALI 2 is the latest version of the DALI protocol. You can see the trademark logo there. DALI 2 and D4I certification is driven by DIIA, the Global DALI Alliance, and that ensures interoperability through testing and certification with trademark use. The trademarks DALI, DALI 2 and D4I are all controlled by DIIA for our members. So the alliance itself, the DALI Alliance, DIIA, is an open global consortium of lighting companies that aims to grow the market for lighting control solutions based on DALI. And you can see a selection of the members on the right. It's also known as the Digital Illumination Interface Alliance. That's the official name, but the easier name is DALI Alliance. Currently, we have more than 290 members worldwide, and they are industry leaders in lighting and control. Membership allows certification or registration of products. Currently, there's around 1,900 DALI 2 certified products. That includes D4i. And for DALI version 1, around 1,500. Membership allows the trademark use of all three of these trademarks, the original DALI and the DALI 2 and D4i certification marks. Now, the market itself is has a very large installed base of projects spanning three decades, so going right back to the 90s. You can find examples here on the DALI Alliance website. Now, DALI is used in major infrastructure projects such as Crossrail in London, MTA in New York, Manchester Airport and Beijing Airport. And here are a, a few quotes from uh, various organizations. So DALI is the largest wired digital open protocol in the world for lighting. So very precise statement. And from the same source, open protocols will be the growth winners over the next few years in smart lighting and connected controls. And for the market size, DALI is the largest segment for smart lighting with 15% CAGR expected over the next five years. You can find details of these links when you download this presentation later. So the next few slides, I'm going to look at the mapping of D4I and DALI 2 to the L prize criteria. So you saw from Gabe that the L prize uh, is split into several topics. You can see five topics here, and I've got three of them grayed out. And each topic has several categories uh, where the, the judges will look um, if you've met them and uh, award points if you have. And I, I'm highlighting some ways that D4I and DALI 2 could help meet these criteria. So I'm not going to explain everyone in detail because there's there are quite a, a few of, of these areas. But uh, I welcome you to, to look at these offline later, but I'll pick a few of these out. So efficacy, this uh, topic has up to 10 points being awarded. DALI products give a wide dimming range and individual addressability, and that allows you to get just the right amount of light in just the right places. So not maybe quite what the judges are looking for in terms of LED efficacy, but the control and the dimming capability gives you that overall system efficacy. Quality of light, up to eight points. Uh, light output, um, it's part of the DALI specifications and the tests. So we actually measure light output. It's not just a, a check of communications on the bus. There are measurements of light output in the testing, both static and dynamic measurements. Color is part of DALI, this part of the standard for color, and there's a wide dimming range. You have to check with the manufacturer, though, to see how far down their control gear, their LED drivers will go. Okay, connectivity is a large topic in the competition. Uh, there's quite a few areas here that DALI can help. So picking a few of these. The technical interoperability, well, that's what 
D4I and DALI2 are all about. Because of the testing and certification, the products are interoperable. They're addressable. There's energy reporting built in. We'll look at that later. All lighting control strategies are supported because DALI, DALI2 and D4I are specific for lighting control to meet the needs of lighting control. And system resilience is part of the specification and the testing that the operation through power cycles, short power interruptions and bus failure, that operation is defined, it's also configurable and part of the testing. So a number of areas there that we meet. Continuing with connectivity, there's fault detection and diagnostics built into D4i, luminaire level lighting control, Grid services, you have to check with your supplier if their control devices, their application controllers, provide, for example, the demand response functionality. DALI enables it. Check if your supplier provides it. Sensor ready and upgradable. Gabe mentioned this topic earlier. Uh, D4i luminaires are ready for sensors or communication devices to be plugged in or upgraded. Ease of installation and configuration. So DALI is a simple two-wire bus providing communications and power. Simply connecting all the devices in parallel using daisy chain or a star connection or a combination of both in the same system. So it's very easy to wire the devices together. So continuing now on the product life cycle topic, up to seven points, replaceable components because of the interoperability that's provided by the, the standard and the certification of the drivers and the control devices, that enables the replacement of products. So if you have a luminaire with D4i drivers, for example, you can look for D4i drivers to replace them with. And you just have to check that they're appropriately, appropriately specified. For example, the power rating, the voltage, the current rating for the, the LED lamps. Innovation and inclusion. So the initial cost could be minimized, for example, by allowing the sensor or communication nodes to be plugged in later. So at the time that the luminaire is sold, it may not have those plugged in. They may have connectors such as the Zaga Book 20 or a NEMA connector, and you can plug in the sensors later. Also, we're still developing, we're still evolving the standards. So it's uh, future-proofed because of the the connector system and the standards and the interoperability. Sensors that are produced today may be uh, improved upon later, so you'll be able to replace those sensors. Or communication standards, for example, city-wide communications are still evolving. So in the future, you'll be able to change your communications node, or even if, if it, the luminaires are sold without that originally, a communications node could be added later for wireless communications. So there's some of the ways that you can get extra points by choosing DALI2 or D4I components. So what is D4I? It's actually an extension of DALI2. And these are certification programs provided by the DALI Alliance. So for D4I, your drivers, your control gear, require a minimum, minimum set of functionality. Control devices require functionality to aid plug and play, and luminaires require one to four D4i drivers. So that's how you get it. You have to um, meet certain criteria for the drivers if you're a driver manufacturer, such as power and energy. We'll look at this later. Control devices have functionality for plug and play, and luminaires need to have the D4i components inside. And that's especially for intraluminaire use. That's where D4I is targeted. It specifies what's inside the luminaire. All D4I LED drivers provide the luminaire data and energy and diagnostics data. So power and energy and diagnostics data. And D4I enables DALI inside these intelligent IoT ready luminaires. Other D4I implementations are also permitted and it simplifies the addition of sensors and communication devices enabling this plug and play 
interoperability when combined with a connector system. And you'll find out about that from Adrian shortly. Uh, so Zagabook 18 and 20, 20 connectors or the NEMA ANSI specification for connectors. Just to show you what a luminaire with D4i or a D4i luminaire would look like, inside it's got a D4i driver, the LED driver with the lamp. The driver meets these extra specifications. There's the DALI bus inside the luminaire providing power and data. It can power the sensor node, for example, and that implements this part of the standard. So, so that's what you need. This part for the sensor, these parts for D4i, that's on top of the DALI 2 requirements for control gear, and your luminaire just has to have those D4i components. So the data specifications, which are part of the D4i LED drivers, have three main areas. The first is the luminaire data. So it has lots of information about the luminaire, enabling asset management, even down to, for example, the, the CCT value, the color of the lamp, the CRI, and even the color of the paint for outdoor luminaires. All of that can be stored in the LED drivers inside the luminaire. The next part provides energy and power reporting. So that's real time reporting. And the third part here is for diagnostics and maintenance, giving information about the control gear and the lamps, including failure conditions and runtime data, such as temperature information. That enables predictive maintenance. And these specifications are available from DIIA and are also included in ANSI C137.4. So here's just an example of using the data. Well, the luminaire data would be programmed in the factory. So the luminaires are programmed there. Now, in use in the field, you can get automated commissioning because these installed luminaires have that extra data, which can be automatically transferred to a remote network, reducing human error. And the operator or the central con control room has a full map of all the asset information. During operation, you've got performance monitoring, so energy and power could be used for billing. D4i doesn't specify the accuracy, so if you need a specific accuracy, check with your supplier that they meet the accuracy standards that you need. And also, we've got predictive maintenance because of the diagnostics built in. So the repair team can have knowledge of the location and the type of fixture, the color of the paint. If it's been damaged, for example, it's an outdoor fixture that needs repainted. They can get all of that information remotely just by reading it out of the memory banks. So how do you get D4i or DALI 2 certification? Well, first you have to test the products and that can be done either by the DALI Alliance member or at an accredited test house. Test houses are listed on the DALI Alliance website. The link is there. These are the current, uh, currently accredited test houses. Now certification is obtained by the member submitting the product information and the test results to the DALI Alliance. We will check all of that. Some of it's automatic, some of it's manually checked. And so all of that's verified before D4i or DALI 2 certification is granted. Once granted, the products are publicly listed on the website. So you can actually search for all of those certified products on the website today. Now the product database is growing, still growing quite rapidly. You can see this kind of solid line with the, the dots along it. That's showing the number of DALI 2 and D4i devices that are certified. So these are all listed in this product database. There's the link. Uh, the, the blue bars here are the number of members of the DALI Alliance. And you can see the milestones. And we're just about to have a new milestone, which will be DALI 2 emergency lighting amongst a few other uh, parts of the standard we're releasing. Now the product information in the database, you can see the list of products, select a product and see the specific information 
and that shows the specific parts of the standard that are implemented, such as the luminaire data, power and energy, and so on. But if you're looking for D4i specifically, you automatically know if it says D4i, it already has the luminaire data, power, energy, and diagnostics. So D4i is an easy way to make sure you've got all of that information. Okay, finally from me, the certification process for different devices uh, may start in the DALI Alliance and for the connectors you see is with Zag and you'll hear about that in a minute. So for the LED drivers themselves, the testing and certification is done by the DALI Alliance members submitting their test results to us where we verify and certify. So that's how you get D4i on the LED drivers. For control devices, it's the same. So they start in the DALI Alliance, the members test and, cert and submit the information and test results for certification. Once D4i is obtained, then it's possible to go on to the Zaga, Zaga Consortium and submit for Zaga certification to allow Zaga D4i on the control device. That might be the sensor or the communications node for a luminaire. So to get Zaga D4i, you obviously need one and two to be completed. For the luminaires, you can get D4i by selecting D4i components inside your luminaire. If you want Zaga D4i, you submit the information uh, to the Zaga test house for Zaga certification, and then you can get Zaga D4i on your luminaire. So of course, it must have the, Z the D4i components as well as appropriate uh, Zaga or NEMA type connectors, and Adrian will, will explain. And for the connector itself, of course, that's purely the Zaga consortium. Okay, so questions will be at the end, but uh, for now, I'll hand over to Adrian. Thanks very much. That's Scott. Thank you, Scott. So Adrian, you have control. All right. Thank you. Make sure you can see my screen okay. All right, so thank you very much. I'm Adrian Green. I'm the working group I chair. I don't see your for... screen right now, Adrian. Sorry. Oh, you do not. I'm sharing your screen. Yes, I see it. It's visible. Oh, maybe it's just me then. Okay. I see it as well. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, it's thank coming you. now. All right. Sorry to interrupt. All right. You. Little, little time delay between us, I guess. Yeah, so yes, I, I, so I'm uh, Adrian Green. I'm the working group chair for Book 20, and uh, I'd like to introduce the Zaga Smart Interface between indoor luminaires and sensing communication modules. So we have recognized that there's a market demand for smart, future-proof luminaires, which are easily upgradable to keep up with rapid developments in the digital networking technology. So the solution is the Zaga D4i interface standard. So it's a simple way to add sensors and or communication modules to luminaires. Zaga and the DALI Alliance have collaborated to develop and maintain a standardized interface between luminaires and sensors and or communication modules. And the combination of the complementary specifications for mechanical fit, digital communication, and power supply for the modules. We have a Zaga D4i certification program that Scott touched upon uh, to ensure that uh, all the components are fully interoperable. So this is a visual display of what the Zaga Book 20 interface looks like. Um, essentially, you've got an indoor luminaire. You have uh, an LED driver, one or more. Uh, then you have a communication and uh, power supply protocol to, uh, to the sensor. You've got a mounting slot, which is defined in the specification. We have a standardized two position connector to join together the, uh, the module with the luminaire. And then you've got optional sensors and or communication modules, which can be used in the system. So features of the Zaga D4i interface standard. It's, uh, it's easy to add or upgrade sensors or communication modules to a luminaire. Uh, it enables future proof luminaires to keep pace with the developments in digital networking. And uh, it utilizes the uh, the DALI 2 bus, the interluminaire DALI 2 bus that uh, Scott touched upon. This enables bidirectional communication between sensors and our communication modules and the LED drivers using the well-established and standardized DALI 2 protocol. D4i 
AI drivers are smart. They're able to report operational and diagnostic data to an external network. They can provide inventory related information about luminaires. And with a suitable wireless communication module, the luminaire is able to interact with an external lighting control network to become part of the Internet of Things. So we, we mentioned the uh, complementary specifications between Zaga and uh, the DALI Alliance. Uh, Scott had touched upon uh, some of the various parts of the D4I standard, which would include uh, the integrated bus power supply, luminaire data for asset management, energy reporting for LED drivers, diagnostic and maintenance data for drivers, and uh, also the ability to enable uh, luminaire mounted control devices. So the Zaga specification from uh, within book 20, essentially it is defining the mechanical interface between the module and the luminaire. And we'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit more detail on coming slides. It also specifies the two position electrical connector to make that uh, connection with the modules. And it uh, specifies the luminaire's electrical interface. Book 20 provides several different mounting options for modules. Um, as you can see here, we've got three primary different types. You can either mount the modules from inside the luminaire through the specified enclosure opening. You can mount the modules from outside of the luminaire through that defined opening. Or you could also utilize a bracket or a mounting fixture for the luminaire, which would again um, be attached to the uh, specified opening within the luminaire. There are five different standardized mounting form factors for sensor, mo sensor modules today. Two of these are rectangular and three of them are cylindrical. In the rectangular form factors, we have 44 by 17 millimeter opening specified for smaller modules. And then we allow for up to the, the uh, 60 by 22 millimeter rectangular model modules for, for slightly larger sensors or modules that uh, may need to attach to luminaire. Within the cylindrical form factors, all of them utilize the 22 millimeter diameter mounting hole, but they specify different demarcation models to uh, allow for space for the module within the luminaire and also defining uh, keep out zones outside of the luminaire for uh, lens, the lenses that might uh, protrude. So features of the interconnect. There's a two position plug and receptacle interface which uh, is easy to use um, and provides that reliable DALI connectivity. Uh, it has pokey oak features to prevent incorrect meeting, and it enables a connection with uh, the polarity insured. Connector provides fingerproof protection. So the housing provides touchproof protection for the separable contacts. And it provides plug and play functionality, which can be installed by a generalist. So there's no need to, for, to have a, a, an electrician to, to swap out and replace modules. It has an integrated latch feature, which provides a five Newton minimum retention force when needed. So that makes sure that the connector remains intact. SOG Consortium and the DALI Alliance have collaborated to create a joint certification program for interoperable luminaires and sensing and communication modules. Scott, Scott touched on some of those details earlier. Product certification will allow for the use of Zaga and D4i logos on luminaires and sensor modules. LED drivers are eligible for D4i certification. And, uh, the connectors themselves would have Zaga certification. Benefits of this joint certification. Uh, that certification gives confidence of interoperability of these components. Uh, the certification is carried out by an independent authority, and the products are traceable within public databases. The logos which are utilized are trademarked to prevent uh, misuse. And uh, certification provides business advantages to users. So certified luminaires and components are available from multiple suppliers as a result. Uh, and Logos provide an established brand for product marketing. Certification ensures that luminaires are future proof and will not be and will be able to host uh, next generation Zaga D4i nodes as they become available. Zaga Book 20 connectors can obtain Zaga certification by Zaga certified test houses. LED drivers can obtain D4i certification through the Dali Alliance. And as we touched on earlier, uh, luminaires and modules can obtain Zaga D4i joint certification. 
the appropriate logos, logos are shown on your screen here. This slide provides a visual illustration of, of product certifications for indoor illuminators using the Zaga Book 20. So you've got the Zaga D4i logos for the modules and the luminaire. The LED drivers would carry the D4i certification and connectors would be Zaga certified. A quick summary on certification. Zaga and the Dali Alliance have developed this joint certification program for indoor luminaires, which is based on the standardized interface between drivers, luminaires, and sensing communication modules. The Zaga D4i certified luminaires will be the backbone of intelligent building management systems. It creates a simple way of adding control and sensing modules into a building system architecture. A large ecosystem of modules will become available or Zaga certified luminaires, providing additional options for, for users. It allows the selection of luminaires today for technology advances that control and sensing modules will eventually bring tomorrow. Adding the requirement of Zaga D4i certification simplifies the tender processes. Uh, the certification provides an assurance of interoperability and gives confidence that the different parts of the system will operate together. All Zaga D4i certified products can be traced to an easily accessible database on the Zaga website. So the following slides provide an outline of the process of certification. So for luminaires, um, the manufacturer would, would become a, an associate or regular member of Zaga. They would design their product in compliance with Book 20. And the manufacturer would compile required documentation and submit this to a Zaga test center. The product would then be tested for compliance against the Zaga specification, and the product would be awarded Zaga D4i certification in use of the Zaga and D4i logos. For components, the manufacturer would be an associate or regular member of Zaga. They would design a product in compliance with the Book 20, and the manufacturer would compile required documentation and sample and submit it to the Zaga test center. This would then be tested for compliance against the Zaga specifications, and the product would be awarded Zaga certification in use of the Zaga logo. For certification of Zaga D4i mod modules, a manufacturer would be a member of, either a, would be an associate or a regular member of the DALI Alliance, as well as Zaga. The product would be designed in compliance with the Book 20. Product would be self tested or tested by Dali Alliance test house. It would, the manufacturer would submit results to the Dali Alliance for verification and deeper certification. Um, they would compile the required documentation and submit it to the Zaga test center. This would then be tested for compliance against the Zaga specifications, and the product would then be awarded the Zaga D4i certification and allow for use of the Zaga and D4i logos. So we prepared a, uh, a, a video uh, giving an overview of the Zaga Book 20 interface. Um, we had thought originally to share it in this webinar, but we found that uh, depending on the browser that you're using, you may or may not be able to hear the audio. So we will share the information with you. Uh, and it's, you can follow the attached link, which uh, will be in the presentation that you will receive later um, so that you can uh, take a look at that uh, at your leisure. But uh, I just want to thank everybody for your time and attention. So I'll pass it back to Paul. Great. Thanks so much, Adrian. Uh, take back control. Sorry for that. Okay, so now we're uh, into the Q&A session. Um, so thanks very much to all of the presenters. Um, we have the panelists uh, still on the line. So keep putting those uh, questions into the Q&A box at the side. So I can see a few questions already there. Let me just have a look. So first question I see, I guess this one's uh, for Gabe is how will L prize requirements be checked? I guess
guess the I guess that's a question that's asking how will they be checked again? How will the entries be checked against the um, requirements? If I'm understanding that correctly. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so it differs a little bit from the concept phase um, to the prototype and manufacturing and installation phases. The, the concept phase is it's a you're, you're basically submitting a design on paper, and there's a form that we've developed. Um, it's called the it's a lot, it's a mouthful. The concept phase technical performance and scoring form, and on that form you're going to uh, basically estimate the the performance of uh, your submission in terms against a particular requirement and provide a technical justification for that performance. And this is where you're going to basically demonstrate to the judges that um, you, you understand um, kind of the, the technical solution that you're proposing and, and it's technically credible. Um, and the judges will uh, you know, review the design documents that you've submitted um, and this, uh, these technical justifications to basically score your submittal. So that's how it works in the concept phase. Once you get to the prototype and manufacturing and installation phases, it'll be a, a combination of actual product testing. We'll be requesting things like LM79 aspects like that, um, a, as well as uh, a physical evaluation uh, by the by the judges, and uh, they'll be you know reviewing all those test results and and. Uh, scoring the submission and, and recommending winners based on the number of points. Uh, we go into this in a lot more detail in some of the other uh, webinars we've uh, hosted, and you can go to that Hero X L Prize uh, website uh, to find links to those other webinars if you'd like to get a better understanding of this. And of course, the official rules document goes into a lot more detail. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks for that, Gabe. That's a great answer. Um, next question I see, I'm not sure if this is really for, it's probably for Adrian. Um, it's about Zaga uh, and I can see it says, uh, what's the difference between Zaga book 18 and Zaga book 20? So uh, Adrian, I guess you're the best person to answer that one. Sure, sure. Yes. So, so Zaga book 18 is specifically for outdoor luminaires, primarily for, for roadway applications. And uh, Zaga Book 20 is uh, specifically for indoor applications. So there, there's definitely a lot of similarities between them, and that uh, both of them are referencing the use of the, the Zaga, sorry, the, the D4i uh, LED drivers. So the communication protocol is um, very much the same, um, not exactly the same, but very similar. Um, but uh, yeah, th the main distinction between Book 18 and Book 20 is the distinction of the outdoor application for Book 18 and indoor for Book 20. Okay, and if I understood correctly, that's that involves different connectors as well, right? So that's correct. Primarily. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a different uh, different interface entirely. Yeah, the, the book 18 has a four position interface where where three are used essentially, and for the Zaga book 20 is a two position interface. Yeah. Okay, I can see another question here. Um, it says, uh, can room based systems qualify? So again, I guess that one's probably for for Gabe. Um, Room-based systems. Um, I think that there's probably some. Well, well, maybe. Um, you know, there's some some uh, some of the connectivity requirements in in particular. Um, I guess it depends on the on the specific room based system, but uh, some of those requirements would include things like uh, luminar level lighting control. So you've got to have a, a networked uh, the capability and in your submission um, a network sensor per luminaire. Uh, there's requirements for addressability, so all your devices and luminaires need to be addressable, um, so you can really kind of program things uh, and optimize them. And some of the room-based systems I'm aware of uh, don't all offer this addressability. They may not offer uh, a sensor per luminaire. So in that case, they would not. But I, I, I do know there's there's probably some some room-based systems out there that that could potentially meet the requirements. Right. So if they meet the requirements, then then they would qualify. Yeah, that's that's the short answer. I guess that makes sense. Um, Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing an awful lot of other questions. I had a couple of questions that I saw uh, along the way, which was um, 
relating to um, component selection, um, relating to, uh, to D4I. So for example, uh, and Scott, I guess this one's probably for you, that um, if there's a, you mentioned the database uh, and products listed in the database, but if there's a combination of, uh, of products um, or, or DALI parts that I'm looking for to, uh, to, to maximize the, uh, the opportunity, um, but they're not currently available in the, in the database in that combination, what would be the, the recommendation? Well, to ask your supplier to, uh, to provide one. So you'll find quite a lot of combinations of products. For example, if you're looking for D4i LED drivers, you will also find some with color control. So you can select these properties in the database, filter out to show only those, and then all those certified products meeting those properties will be shown. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't find what you're looking for, you could ask some of the manufacturers that are already providing products or any of our members saying that you're interested in them. Okay. Paul, I have That's a question. Um, yeah. If you're open to me uh, asking our other panelists here, um, it, one of the um, questions that we've often heard, or maybe it's a point of confusion about about D4I, has to do with um, uh, you know whether it requires the full use of the Dolly protocol. Um, you know, in the in the U.S., uh, Dolly isn't used that much to date anyway and we've got all these different protocols being used um uh, you know there's bluetooth mesh uh there's there's variations of zigbee um there's a, a lot of proprietary protocols uh and so i guess maybe a question for scott you can answer about this is is um is d4i just for dolly based lighting control systems or or can d4i work with some of these other protocols that uh uh, other US manufacturers are using? So D4i inside the luminaire is using DALI between the components, but then you've, you've got communications nodes which allow it to connect to other ecosystems, such as, I think you mentioned Zigbee, so, or Bluetooth Mesh. These are all possibilities as well. And we do have standards that have uh, actually just been published in the last few months for uh, Zigbee and for um, Bluetooth mesh gateways, but uh, these products will come along soon and I'm sure there will be D4i versions of them. But it's also possible to use DALI 2 or D4i or even the original DALI in a very simple way. You don't have to make use of all the rich functionality that it's providing. You, you can use it in a simple way, similar to the old 0 to 10 volt analog control, where everything just goes to the same level. So you can broadcast levels quite simply. You could use rotary or slider controls or push buttons that just send a level command along the two wires and every luminaire goes to the same level. Uh, and then there's no configuration required. It's, it's just done by wiring, just in the same way that zero to 10 volt is done. Wire the devices together and it just works in that basic way. But you all the control gear, for example, does have the capability of being addressed. So that capability is there. You don't have to use it, but it's there in case you choose a system that does use it. Yeah, maybe that uh, would be, uh, people could take a look at uh, some of our other webinars relating to, uh, to DALI and connectivity uh, that we've, uh, we've done recently. Uh, also, Gabe, I, I would like to answer it by referring to one of the slides in Scott's presentation uh, that uh, that shows the market size for DALI. Uh, and although people in, in the US tend not to shout about it quite so much, um, but uh, but I think you'll find that uh, that DALI, or particularly DALI 2, is actually used in a lot more uh, products than, uh, th than you might think. Good. Yeah, glad, glad to hear. I, I, we've just heard a little bit of the perception, you know, I, I don't use DALI, and so is, is D4i for me or not? So I just wanted to uh, help help clear that up in case anyone had that question that this is, I think that this standard's got um, a lot of flexibility and uh, in terms of how far you go with it and can really work with a lot of different things out there. That's exactly it.
Okay, so I see another couple of questions here. Um, oh, there was a clarification that uh, in talking about the room-based systems that uh, it was related to, it's connected to the in internet, but not, uh, also that luminaires can talk to each other and other devices. So I think you already answered that, Gabe, so I, I think that's okay. Um, can we send the slides from today's presentations? Yes, there'll be uh, the material will be made available afterwards. Um, is it possible to use DALI version one Zargas in DALI certification? Uh, sorry, in Zarga certification. Um, so Scott, I think that's that's probably one for you. No, so definitely not DALI version one. DALI version one products only have registration. There is no certification of those. So they're not. Um, necessarily as uh, robustly tested as DALI 2 and D4I components. So there is an al al allowance of DALI 2 um, for D4I luminaires, but you have to read the details. If you, your luminaire manufacturers will check that out, you must provide the data requirements and the power supplies that are required. So you have a bit of extra work if you're choosing DALI 2 components and you want to make a D4I luminaire. But the easy way is just to choose D4i LED drivers for your luminaire. Then you've got everything. They've got the power supplies built in. They've got the data, the luminaire data, the energy data, and the diagnostics data all built in. Sure, that that's kind of the point, right? That it it's everything's uh, as we've seen from the uh, the presentations that uh, it's it's plug and play. Yeah, that's uh, the purpose when it's of D4i. combined with the with the Zaga books. So. Uh, it's just really simple. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm not seeing any further um, questions. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave it open um, for a couple of minutes. Uh, if we see anything further that comes into the uh, in, into the boxes, um, then we can include that in the material afterwards. But uh, we're pretty much bang on time, and uh, and I'm not seeing any any further questions. So I'm going to close the uh, the presentation right now. Uh, I just want to oops, want to say thank you to uh, to the presenters first of all, um, for the people behind the scenes as well that put together the material and uh, and and help make the presentations possible and uh, and this webinar possible. And thanks very much to all of the attendees for for taking part and for your uh, your excellent questions. So thanks everyone. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna close the call, but I'll leave it open in case there's any couple of last minute questions that sneak in. Thank you. Thank you.